welcome to alternate pool. Jason Halley and Terry Hunt. Big, big test for them this evening, but really excited to see how they'll go. There we go. Yeah, can't play pool without your chalk, Carl. You have been playing this about 40 years. <laughs> it's very Carl Morris, that, but what a way to start the night. Probably put a golden break on it as well. It, that also would be very Carl Morris, yeah, correct. Catches the break really nicely, makes a ball. So it will be the Day Morris partnership first to the table. This first frame is Scotch doubles. That's it, and that means alternate shots. And then have two frames of singles, another Scotch doubles in the fourth, two more frames of singles, and if required, a final and deciding frame will be played as Scotch doubles in frame number seven. Carl Morris looks like he's taken the team captain role as Chris Dane knocks in a yellow, which therefore nominates them on yellows, and it will be that colour set with which they take on. The game is simple. You pot the yellows, you pot the eight ball, you win the frame. Four of those will win you the match. All the pairs tonight, four of them, will play each other in a round robin format. 20 minutes on the match clock, and we will take the score at zero, should it be required if no team gets to four. Which does mean the draw is in place as well. Perfect angle here just to pop into the red, open it all up. <coughs> Should be plain sailing from here for these two. It really will be interesting to see how they get on. I could imagine Carl Morris is a tough player to, to play well with. There's a lot going on, as we always talk about, when Carl Morris is playing. And you need to kind of be able to handle that yourself. But Chris is a very good character himself, and I think he'll really enjoy this experience. Although they're having a big disagreement here where Chris wants to get to, or where Chris wants Carl to get to, requires quite a bit of side. And I'm not sure Carl wants to play the shot. Plays the shot he wants to play and overdoes it. Or oh, does he? Because Chris taps the table. Well, he was putting it in an area, so I, I believe he was playing for, for left centre, but he's overdone it, which means he's got left corner. Oh, he's going to cut this back. So you, now you're going into balls. This is where I say he's overdone it. Judged it well, really well. But if he's not on the yellow to the bottom right corner, Kyle's got to then come up with a shot. And if he landed straight previously, well, he's OK, he's fine. It's actually a very, very well judged well, shot, that, from Chris Day. Beautiful shot from Chris, yeah. Uh, well, Chris did mention this, that they'll be playing killer. <laughs> and that's exactly what has just happened with that positional shot. He's left Chris as awkward as he could be on this yellow. I don't think he can do much more than drop this in as dead weight as possible and leave the thin clip. Try not to overhit it and snooker. Carl. It's OK. <laughs> it wasn't without its issues, but this eight ball will be for the, the break clearance. It was a very, very good break. Yeah, and you heard from Chris in that interview that he has been to a, a finals night. He got there with Sean Story a couple of years ago. They were eliminated by eventual winners Gareth Potts and Mark Selby. Chris will try and keep him waiting. Oh, he, he is breaking so well at the minute, Chris Day. I cannot believe that's dry. We saw him at the World Championships in Blackpool recently and the pro series that led into that. And he has just found a way to break that just begs the question <laughs> how on earth are you making a ball stands up on it a little bit more and it, it, it has allowed him just to free up and get more power through the pack the problem with that is you can miss strike it and actually as much power as he had there he did just catch it a tip low on the cue ball there not saying he you know there was some power taken out but not much he still had loads there on show and will feel like he should have made a ball so as this able comes Jason Halley Missed his cannon, I think. Never looked quite on, but must have been trying to move the yellow there. Terry's coming to get involved. I like this. I really like this. Yeah, I think he's suggesting to play the red on the left side rail. If he's on it, it looks tight from that angle. But if he's on it, it's a natural angle to come across into the yellow and the red. Yeah, the 
there is a bonus in terms of if he jaws the red and it doesn't fall, it will take the pocket, which isn't as good an advantage as it used to be back in Terry's day, but it will slow down Chris, but it would make Chris favourite for the frame. Oh, he's a little unlucky. He played that shot really nicely. Yeah. Sort of expected that to drop, really. I've seen worse shots than that drop in the last few weeks, but it's an advantage in world rules in well let's just umbrella term it pub rules but in international rules having a one of your own balls covered in the bag it is not much of an advantage you can pot your opponent's ball as long as you play a legal shot in doing so if you don't pot one of your own it's just simply a loss of turn if you do pot one of your own in the process you stay at the table and Chris has got a chance to do both of those things. Chris is putting a few balls here. Is he thinking about being aggressive, trying to find a combination? Was he trying to get above the yellow there and, and play the loss of turn off combination on the one he's nearest to now? Difficult to say because he's got the problem on the bottom right and obviously the red's causing him an issue. And Maybe just putting himself into a bit of trouble here. Fabulous pot. Beautiful. It develops the yellow as well. How good's that from Chris Day? And he might even might be a touch thin. I was wondering if he might have been able to screw across the bottom cushion and play yellow onto red, but I think it's a touch thin. drop it in and then play the combination or loss of turn. If he plays the loss of turn, he's got to make sure he gets the cue ball hidden. Or does this sneak through the gap? Well, that definitely helps because it makes the combination a realistic chance. Yeah, Beautiful. there it is. is really Must admit, good. the entire time I was watching that frame, I was keeping an eye on the, on the overhead camera that we have a bit of access to in the commentary studio, all mod cons and all that. And sort of base you you're thinking on on that and body language and all the rest of it and I did not think that that middle yellow was accessible like that no nor did I I thought he had to play it with the bottom one which means the combination was wasn't really on in which case this has been a pretty flawless visit from Chris Day it's been brilliant <laughs> Having a bit of a laugh and a joke with Carl Morris He's certainly knocking on the door now. He's, he's, you can see how hard he works at his game and how much it means to him and really is trying hard to get into that winner's enclosure. He doesn't want to just be making up numbers. He wants to be out there to win. And he's trying and not ashamed to try anything, really, and or ask anyone for advice. And well, Jason Hay played down his break earlier on. He said his practice partner and his good mate Jordan Shepard had been giving him some bad tips on the break. <laughs> and, uh, I can imagine exactly what Sheppy would have been like if he'd hit that exact break. He'd have been fuming that it had come up dry because he struck it really nicely. Yeah, a couple of dry breaks now. I think it's like three on the trot. Yeah, Doesn't feel two like three. for Halley and Hunt as well, yeah. which is which is tough. It's always tough to win matches when you're not getting first visit chances. Yeah. To be fair, Terry's was a was a cut break and he didn't. It was quite a, um, a light cut break, but yeah, sort of. Still thought he would make one. It's interesting actually watching the communication between Chris and Carl. We often make a big deal about the communication between partnerships, particularly in Scotch doubles frames, but why it's particularly pertinent for these two is the fact that well, Carl's deaf. Yeah. So there's a lot, of, it, it introduces an extra obstacle. Chris has to be very clear, and so Carl can lip read him. Lots of hand gestures out there and cue pointing and the pool language is certainly being spoken. Yeah, it, it, it is its own pidgin language in a way, isn't it? Oh, that's fine. <coughs> Full ball on the red here would be perfect. Doesn't want to slide off it. Yeah, nice. And there is perfect. 
natural line he wants to get to is just to leave it to drift down for eight ball right centre. Easy to get there. All things considered, been a pretty good performance from Chris Day and Carl Morris. 4-0 start to their Pairs Cup quest. And if Jason Halley and Terry Hunt are to find an underdog victory tonight, they will have to do it with two wins out of their remaining two games. They're right up against it. But Chris Day and Carl Morris, a perfect start. And here he is, the main man, Chris Wakelin, joins us for the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup. Let's see how his break's feeling. And good to see his front ball breaking. Oh. Well, it had to be big. I mean, it, it's going to be dry, but it's a statement, the fact that Chris is having a break. Wacker's got a huge break on him, and I expected Wacker to take the, the opening scotch frame here, but that is fabulous. Can't really break much better than that. He's very, very unlucky he's not made a ball. Eight ball was moving off that one as well, which might be something to keep an eye on. But it is going to bring our Irish duo to the table. Some, uh, some fabulous shirts on these boys in green. Yeah, look good, don't they? They give me a little bit of a, of a USA 94 vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. They've got themselves a good chance here to get off to reverse clearance. Just a couple of balls need to be careful on. The one that's sort of top of the triangle area. Obviously, you, it does go, but can you get there? Not guaranteed. One below the eight ball, I believe that there's more room there. To, so that's not really the problem. It is the one at the top of the triangle area. have got a touch problem is if they go into the they top forward and go into the red you'll be on the yellow bottom right but then you can't get onto the yellow at the bottom of the table so I think they have to leave leave that and come back to it yeah, that's exactly what they're doing it's really hard to get where they're looking from this ball at the bottom of the table really tough I don't see how they get there Yeah, where Ben yeah. was looking originally, uh, that didn't look possible. This it, does. Yeah, you can go. You can go. You know, drop it in if it goes long. You can get to that, or you can play into the red, maybe. But you can't get to the left hand side of this yellow from here. He's landed about as good as he possibly could be on that. Actually, could have done with having a little bit more angle. I was just thinking that actually. Yeah. So you could just really not have to over hit this and just get the cue ball back out. He's got to fly this in all of a sudden. Yeah, yes. that was missable. Yeah. That was a tough shot. Yeah, yellow's gone and made the eight ball a bit of an awkward ball, so it won't <coughs> necessarily be the easiest and quick counter clearance here. It might take a safety shot or two, but I'll be just pleased to get to the table here. Well, as you heard from Rob and Chris, neither one of them has got a particular punch on for playing safe. It's not exactly what I'm expecting here either. Looks like they've left a pretty nice angle here to come into the three reds together if they need to, but I don't think they do. Yeah, my only question is the eight ball. Is there enough room just to pot it clean, in which case they don't have to worry about it? I was assuming the yellow is blocking it, but maybe it isn't. Got an angle here where they could play a cannon into the, the yellow if they needed to. Wouldn't be nice on the next ball, though. Yeah, this eight ball must go. And then there's not much communication between the two of them. They're just getting down and, and potting balls. Rob's come around to have a look at the eight ball here. That was an option fact for Chris just the ball he's just played he could have played that with a could have come through maybe a touch of running just to 
move the yellow down, staying on the one that Rob's on. Here, Rob say he thinks it goes. Looks like Chris wasn't the world's biggest believer. Yeah, I'm not either. To be honest with you, I don't think it goes. I think it can be turned in. I don't think you can get to the potting angle. Of course, one thing Chris has to factor in is this game uses a small cue ball, so is yeah. That's going to be his biggest challenge tonight, no doubt about it. <coughs> Chris certainly thinks this is a tester. Yeah, he's playing with a little bit of right hand side just to turn it in. Yeah. And it goes. No problems. Tough to live up to that first break, honestly. Yeah, didn't hit that one quite as well. It's still a solid strike, but not quite as as clean down the middle. Welcome to being a poor player now, Chris. Yeah. Frustration at a dry break is just par for the course, my friends. Tough layout here for Sean. Two big problem yellows, three really, one right centre as well. Reds have two or three really big issues as well, so I'd be surprised if we see him go for a finish here. Unless the three ball plants are a genuine option on the right hand side, because that might maybe solves two yellows in one in one go, but I don't think it is. I think it can be made, but I don't think it was a, a guarantee. question for me is how involved in these frames does Rob get for Chris here? Got the angle to play the breakout. Could have a very good layout after this shot. And that is simply cue ball physics catching him out because he's thinking he's going straight into the yellow and the red here. And if the cue ball was the same size as the reds, that would probably be the natural line. And when you play on instinct, Chris Wakelin is seeing natural lines with his normal cue ball. And the lighter white just throws that little bit wider. He can't believe that's gone on that line. I wonder if there was a better option on for Sean there. That's not landed particularly kindly. Could he have played the yellow by the eight ball off the off the red to open up the pocket into the centre and leave the one he's just played rather than canning into it that way? It won't matter if he pulls out a good shot here. Which he has. Now he's in perfect shape. Yeah, if I get a shot from Sean Sharkey. Second shot clock now in play in this match. We haven't really spoken about it so far tonight. It wasn't really a factor in the first match. It being 1 4 0 in pretty comfortable fashion in that fourth frame. But 15 seconds of shot certainly changes the complexion of the, of the match at this stage. Although, with Chris Wakeling's one ranking title coming in the snooker shootout, he's, he's used to running around the table. Sean's just come up a little bit short there. For me, you want to be left centre before you play the one at the top of the table. You play the one at the table for the eight ball, you're tracking down the line to the eight. And no problems though. I think he's got himself back to the straight enough that he can pull this back for the eight ball to the corner. He's controlled that really well because that was thin. So good shot there. Did Sharky. So three and a half minutes remaining. This for the lead. Never in doubt. Finish off the break from Sean Sharkey. And you can see there's a little spring in the Sharkey step. Didn't seem to hit that one as cleanly. Not entirely sure why. 
Oh, it thought about it. <laughs> I don't think Ben Doyle can believe that yellow hovering over the hole at the bottom of your picture didn't go in. It seemed to think about it and just catch the lip of the table almost. Yeah, almost rejected, wasn't it? Yeah. So, Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin, three minutes on the watch. Chance to level the scores, and they'll have the break next as well. Take the one below the eight ball now. You go into the other one. Just don't push it onto the reds. This may have just come a touch too far down the table. Yeah, it just, just causes a slight issue, but they can work that back round. Yeah, it just means they'll have to take one yellow before the other. They do that now if they want. Which isn't necessarily that easy. Yeah. Interesting to see. Again, they didn't talk about it. Chris just getting down. And Very little communication between the two. The yellow ball does need landing on too. Yeah, and if the yellow's tight, top right, then that's not going to be that easy. Yeah, once again, the, the physics of the cue ball catching Chris out. He was trying to well, wanted to be about a foot lower than this. Big shot required here. Oh, big shot found. Does he go in the middle? He's got, well, the fact he's below the eight ball is a start. Oh, yeah. It does. Excellent shot. Still, this isn't guaranteed. And Chris Wakelin misses the eight. It was very, very tight. You saw that there. There was no room on that, really. It had to be perfect. And the Irish boys here can just run a little bit of clock, call their extension, let that clock tick down, pot the open balls, and take your victory. There's no frame difference in this group. It doesn't matter how many frames you win. It just matters that you do win the match. How quickly that has that snuck up on us as well? Let's come around quick, this 20 minutes. One pot away, really. And that is going to be that. And they know it. Big result, this, for Doyle and Sharkey. Get the sense, as we always do in, in open groups, that... Yes, there's the possibility for comebacks, but you know, points on the board so big gives you such a boost going into the second round of fixtures. It's not going to be over for Wakelin and Warren here, far from it, but they're going to be at a disadvantage as it's the Irishmen who take the victory in this match. Sean Sharkey and Ben Doyle with the perfect start to their group campaign. Clock strikes midnight on our second match. Big one coming up next. Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin will stay out there as they take on our other round one losers. A draw keeps them in the night, but only just. It requires them to be reliant on other results. The only way they could then qualify is via a four-way six red shootout. So a win really is of the bottom line for these two pairings. Got the sense that Terry and Jason didn't really get too much to build on. They had a chance each in their first match, and both of them were tough. Two clearances off the break and against them, Chris Day and Carl Morris. Yeah, and they're now in a tough position because they'll feel like they didn't really do a lot wrong, and now they're a defeat against a bit of an all-star duo away from exiting the competition. Well. Terry Hunt, I'm controversially going to say it felt like got that break all wrong, but he rocketed one straight into the bottom right corner pocket here. Yeah, and then he got one in the middle as well. He didn't catch that particularly well at all. Funny old game, isn't it? Yeah. It's the first break they've made a ball off tonight. And once again, there's a tricky layout, but it's one problem ball, I suppose. 
don't think they can go yellows. They're going to have to go reds. The one below the eight ball is the issue. Terry just calling the extension on behalf of Jason there, who was gearing up to play a shot, and Terry's a bit worried he was going to foul it. I've got to go now, mind. Used every single second. Problem is, if they come across the table now yeah, yeah. to play the breakout, they might not be on anything. If they leave it later, then they're getting so deep into the finish that you might make the game quite easy here for yellows. Oh, that's gone. That's gone wrong. Played that with a lot of right-hand side, hoping to get the cue ball to spin up the table after playing the breakout. Yeah, they were pretty quick to crack on with things there, which makes me think they might have had a plan for the red below the eight ball, but... Well, they, you saw them earlier on in the visit talk about the red to right centre and then go into the eight ball, push the red down over the bottom corner pocket, but they were going to be leaving it very late to play that shot. It, it's a, it was a controllable shot for sure. They'd have had to have played the one to the top of the table first, then done it. That's a risk from the whack of that. It's a calculated risk, but it is a risk. There is an open red. is, however, a very, very difficult shot. Terry Hunt can nail it, mind. Reds are right on. Oh, lovely shot. Played that to perfection. So they play it now. I think they might have an angle now to play the cannon onto the yellow. <coughs> Maybe they, when the red goes bottom left, might not be perfect on it. So I think they really want the cannon on the eight ball. The risk here is you need to land on the ball you're moving. The good news is it should be over the pocket. So if they get this right and they hit that eight ball, three quarter ball, well now they're looking at short position. But if they do get the eight ball, three quarter ball, the red should go over the pocket, the eight ball should pop into the open and they should be on it but they need precise position next and they don't have the angle to to really work with here yeah, not much how's the line it looks pretty good I think you have to dig it I think this is one where you play this natural and play the yellow play the cannon in the yellow he's gone for the eight ball it's not worked He'd know better because he's right behind it. I just wonder if that natural line was taking him into the into the yellow and then he would have been high on the red, but he would have had the red to bottom left. Terry's trying to see if he can force a treble here. Maybe a, a double off the yellow. Is that the is that the look? Because it's particularly favourable. Cushion first kick it into the centre maybe. That's looked a bit too long. Foul's been called <coughs> by Rich Tezgel. No need to review that one. Terry tried to call an extension there. I was told by the referee that he's used it. So it was a time foul. It was a very, very tough shot. And in truth, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to the frame. That red stayed up and they were about to lose the frame anyway. Continuing with a very little communication. Pretty simple layout, really, just to negotiate. Even in that situation there, I'm surprised they don't look at each other and say, you want the top one, then the bottom one, rather than the other way around. And Done, though. 
Oh, a scratch of the head. So Jason Halley, who just couldn't quite magic up a ball off the break. Well, Rob Warren looks to the heavens. I don't think he can quite believe what he's done. I was just thinking it's been a while since we've seen a clearance from the break and Rob should get one here and he misses a fairly routine ball by his level. Right at the bottom of the table still remains a massive problem for Jason here. I don't know how you deal with that. Feel like he's just botting himself into some traffic right now. This is actually a trickier finish for Rob, even though there's a couple of reds out of the way than it was originally for him. Those three at the bottom aren't nice at all. Yeah, there's some jeopardy here. For sure. You play the. He's looking to see if he can come all the way down the table. Just wonder if he can get to the two ball plant. Not sure if that shot's on or if whether the red's in the way. And he's just going to play into them. But that's where I was thinking for the two ball plant. Somewhere here. Wouldn't have wanted to move the eight ball on the cushion as well. He's playing the three ball with the red, I think. Yeah, oh, very good. Very nice. Very, very good indeed. Has he gone just too far? Might have to go for the double now. Not sure if he can get back across the table. Looks like he's just passed the straight. Pinch it. I think he's played back for it into the top corner, was he? I don't think you'd ever think about getting this close to it if you go in the double, but he's landed plumb on it. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Rob Warren gets out by hook or by crook. And a 3 0 lead. Yeah, this might be the first time we've seen. Rob break tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's what we've been missing. Yeah, I said it was an interesting decision to see them go with Chris on the break. I mean, he's hit the break well, but Rob has a fabulous break on him. Yeah, whacker by name and nature. He's got some Q power, is Rob, that is for sure. Shot's a little touchy though. Play short position or you can play into it. The problem with playing into it, knocking balls on top of balls and it wasn't necessarily going to come out. I'm not so sure the short position was a great option either. Maybe just needed a maybe a bit higher angle, get more pace into it then. We're back to feeling like they're putting themselves into trouble, although in this situation, that's not a bad thing with only a minute and a half left on the match clock. Yeah, you get the sense they'll, they'll go down swinging in this frame. What on earth are you playing here? And it's on a postcard. Oh, I tell you what. It wasn't a bad effort, you know. Yeah, I had no idea what he was playing there. <laughs> <and> all, honestly, <laughs> I did, they, had, they looked like they had such a clean plan. I, I just wasn't seeing it. Terry Hunt tries to force something to happen, and alas, it will not. However, he has snookered the whacker. Thirty seconds, and Jason Halley still fancies 
this frame if they can get it. They don't want a frame yet, so say it'll be the first on the night. So see if they can run one out here. Twenty seconds. <laughs> Should go bottom left. <laughs> nice development shot. And they are just going to run out of time. But time is not up for Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin. They stay in this night. They are not done yet. Are winning their next match and they are right in contention. But up next on the Ultimate Paul Pairs Cup is a crucial turn of events in Group 5 as Round 1's winners play off against each other and winner takes control of the group next. Always the big match of the night, isn't it? Both players play well in the first matches. Yeah, winner versus winner. If you win this match, however, you go in almost with a champion's advantage in the final match of the night. You need only draw then to qualify. A draw in this match, and we have some real fun and games. This looked like it was going to be the perfect layout until that eight ball got smashed. And now the eight ball's gone to a really awkward position. Does that put Reds into being an option? I didn't think they would have been. But you could deal with the Reds at the bottom of the table and get an angle to pop the one nearest the right centre and open up the other two, maybe. But it is going to be could play into it off this as well if you want to be a bit more reckless. I like this in all honesty. I mean, it's not it's not ended up being a good shot, but I'm a huge fan of just attacking it straight away. So they had an angle to go into the, the problem straight away. And fortunately for them, it's not worked. I don't know, though. I think if they're on short position here to top left, it might not be the end of the world. Oh, yeah. I didn't think they would. I didn't think the right hand one of those two together goes, but they, they were on the one by the eight ball. Then absolutely. Well, they're not. No. Otherwise, they'd be playing it for sure. OK, so they need to get one really good positional shot. You could see them discussing it. Red to right centre is on. The, the sort of top one, the right-hand one of the two, that goes. And if you land perfect, you can play a short position on the other one. Or go into them. But I think you should play the position. Yeah, let's try to play the position there. That's a lovely bit of touch. Oh, one more turn would have been beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> there. <laughs> Carl Morris telling Chris exactly where he wanted it. <laughs> the problem is, so they can drop this in and they'll be on the red to left centre, but they're going to be high on it. Being high on it is not good to get on the last red. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah, I sympathise a bit with Carl here. Watch this red. Thought about it. <coughs> oh, my word. Wow. It rolls on the lip. And we actually saw the Ben Doyle break in yeah. match two of the night. A yellow do exactly that. And, you know, sometimes that can happen. You almost just sort of think, oh, well, you know, unlucky. But when it's with a pot like that, you have to really feel for Carl Morris there. That is some pretty horrible luck. Yeah, he said he can't believe it. I'm, I'm with him, but it goes down as a miss on the stat sheet. I actually don't, I, I don't think, I mean, obviously it hurts them, but it was such a bad angle. They were leaving on the red above the eight ball. There was a thin clip in, the cue ball's going into the yellows. You, you're going to, I mean, they'd have say that they'd have found a way, but they were definitely not guaranteed to get out from, from there if that goes in. I think what will hurt is it's a chance to win the frame versus a chance to, versus, you know, almost guaranteed losing it. But I think if the red drops in and they don't get on the last red, then they've made it a lot easier for, for Ben and Sean. So in a strange way, they're asking Ben and Sean to come up with a much tougher finish than perhaps they maybe would have done if that had gone in for them. Now, of course, if it goes in, they could still get out, but it was very much in the balance for me. The way these two are going about it, I think that the eight ball might go. Oh, 
Well, if it does go to right centre, I'm talking about. I'm surprised they've not left a yellow at the top of the table to do that. You see there, if they'd leave that yellow on the brake line and drop it in, then maybe the eight ball goes. It's tight though, isn't it? But if, if it doesn't, then why have you not played into it earlier than this? So it did go all along. Some good shots to get there. Yeah, and a pretty smooth finish in the end from Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey, but goodness me, didn't that frame hinge? Here's this stand-up break of Chris Day's. It's a cut break, that one. Stand-up cut break. First time I've seen him do that. Very narrow cut break as well. Yeah, he's deliberately playing to get the eight ball moving here. And it would not surprise me knowing, Chris, that that's exactly the plan and what he's been working on. Stand-up front ball break has been electrifying for him, so I'm a little surprised to see him move. But he is a real badger of the game, and he puts in a lot of time and practice, and I'm sure he's been working on that one. Has not been rewarded with a particularly good layout here, though. Red nearest the bottom left corner, really awkward. He looks annoyed here, but in terms of match play, that's perfect. Just play the loss of turn now. You've just got to make sure you hide the one that's in the middle of the table, the one that's in the loose, and you've got complete control of the frame. I can only assume that that's what he's played for by coming down here. He looked a little bit frustrated when he was walking around the table. Yeah. Really, really good. Good shot from Sean, I have to say. The only thing that Chris did wrong was just slide that fraction too far across the table. Gave Sean the option to play a containing shot. He's still in trouble, though. Sean is still a big second favourite for the frame, you feel. Pretty sure the plant now will keep on hand, will just go in off the jaw. Shouldn't squeeze the other one anywhere but where it is now. And it should be fairly clean. You might even try and leave that red for your last ball. Would have wanted to get rid of the red at the top of the table in an ideal world. That's not your last ball. It can be. It's 
better options out there. The way he's going about this, it looks like it more than likely will be the last ball. Okay, goes up for it now. The problem with going up for it now is if you you come up short on the next positional shot, you come up too far, and all of a sudden the cue ball can run a little bit loose. So you need to get the pace control right on this one. These aren't great connecting final two balls. If he gets the pace right, it won't be a problem. And he has got the pace absolutely perfect. Brilliant from Chris Day. That's a fabulous little finish that from Chris Day. Oh, completely shanks that. Shanks the word. That is as poor a miss hit as I've seen from Carl in a long time. <laughs> he almost sent it off the table, you know. Yeah, and what a layout here. And this is where time, clock, match management all comes into play. Because if okay. you chase a finish here and don't get them, there's plenty of time to be countered. So do you take a set and try and earn the opportunity to have the, the chance to go and make it that you can't be countered? Accept the draw if it doesn't work out. Yeah, all good. Oh, this is a massive frame. Yeah, at one we could still finish 2 2 here. I think 2 2 is most favourite right now. Is Sean thinking of going? Big shot if he is. It's too he early. Isn't. It's too early to go. Well, I agree. I just wasn't sure yeah. if he thought that. <laughs> too early. You go with what What do you have? 2.20. If you go with 2.20 and you get one ball away, you're going to leave 30 seconds. Both players have used their extension now. I don't know if that helps Carl particularly. It doesn't. He knows it. Yeah. Carl, at this point, I think we're playing for the draw. <coughs> he's playing for a win in hope, not expectation, because he's relying now on Sean Sharkey, allowing him to have a chance. Reds are, are quite a way behind with Sean at the table. Hasn't left Sean anything nice, though. Oh, what a pot this is if it drops. Yeah. What that's a pot that is. And has that nudge nudged the yellow on? Because now's the time to go. Oh, that is a hell of a pot from Sean Sharkey. If the yellow passes the red to bottom left, he could play it and play the breakout at the same time, but it obviously doesn't. No time foul. He's OK. Pretty good line on the white ball as well. Less than a minute. Match on a knife edge. If he hasn't left a pot on, he might get 35 seconds here. All right then, Sean Sharkey. Can you go and win it? <laughs> it's one thing to have the sort of... the. the t it, it, there's just nothing there, is there? You, you, you're desperate to want to go for something, but I think he just has to accept the draw. Carl Morris will never do that. Although, that was a small gamble because Sean Sharkey, a very, very quick player, he's just not going to have enough time. The two share a giggle and they shake a hand as well. There is nothing to separate them. And that means we are all to play when we come back because we now have a situation where both teams need to win in the final round of fixtures and we still 
have Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin as well who can qualify. All up in the air and it all gets sorted next. <laughs> Bit of a giggle there on Rob Warren as uh, referee Horace Terskel drops his uh, drops his street name instead of his Sunday best. Says whacker to break. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those He's one of those guys, Rob, that he is just known as Wacker to a lot of people. And yeah, or it's just uh, just forgetting himself slightly there, which uh, created the giggle. But this is uh, this is serious business. All jokes aside, massive game this one. Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin have a win and a loss. Chris Day and Carl Morris have a win and a draw. Rob and Chris can really shake things up here if they can win this match. Yeah, it's an interesting... The draw makes things very interesting indeed because Rob and Chris, all of a sudden, normally, once you lose your first match, all you can hope for is a is a six red. But now, they have real hopes of going through straight, win this match and get some help in the final match, and, and they're through. They could still win this match and not have a six red and be out, and they could have a six ready for the next match is a draw as well. So there's a lot to play for for, well, for both pairs out there, but. Yeah, it certainly is. One thing I will say is Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey will be big fans of Rob and Chris here. Yes, completely because agree. if Chris Wakelin and Rob Warren can win this match, it makes things very, very simple for Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey. They simply just have to win their last match and they are through, and there's nothing Robin Chris can do about it. As they'll be on two wins and a defeat, and Sharky and Doyle will be on two wins and a draw. <coughs> Finals, the best of 29. Ooh, Chris's break's got steadily worse as the night's gone on. He hit his first break like a dream. Interesting, you just saw Carl in the chair chatting to, to Chris and he, he's taken his hearing aid out to play with, normally that which is how he normally goes about it, but yes. I, I was surprised to see he put it back in while he was in the chair, which I didn't see him do in the previous matches. It may have done it, I just didn't notice no, he, it. No, he didn't. I just wonder if it's because he wanted to have that little bit more conversation whilst he was back in the dugout, so to speak. But he, no, he, he never plays with it in. It's a really remarkable thing. You hear Carl speak about it. He, because of his, his deafness, you hear it with quite a lot of people. When they lose one sense, it heightens all the others. And Carl's often spoken about his, his heightened sense, senses around the arena. He's got an amazing feel for a shot and match clock, despite the fact he can't hear the beeps. Yeah, he's had some very special moments with that shot and match clock, hasn't he? It didn't really work out for a chance for him, so he just turns it over playing safe. He's happy to see Chris taking this on. You know Chris is going to go. Yeah, he's happy to a point. Chris okay. gets them, I don't think he'll be overjoyed. Yeah, can he play the red to bottom right and miss the red? And No, he obviously can't. But that will work as well. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, he's played that so well, you know. And he can, if he can screw past the yellow, doesn't need to get up near the red. Just almost, just screw past it if he can. And then play the one at the top of the table and leave the one by the cue ball as his last ball. Oh, that's lovely. That's really nice. He's a little bit unfortunate that he's landed straight, which is why I was saying not, you don't need to get too close to it. But I, he obviously had too much angle to go to the left-hand side of the yellow that I was talking about. Now he's just going to have to accept distance. Yeah, and look, a long pot to Chris Wakelin isn't a long pot to most players. He's, has he got there, though? Has he got there? He's tight. 
It's the physics of the cue ball again. It just doesn't react like you're expecting it. Tries to play it with top spin, but it doesn't. It, it just doesn't come through. Oh, that was such a beautiful finish he was putting together as well. Good old fashioned hit and hope. That comes to nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, Shane, because you can see there the ability to do pretty much whatever he wants is there. But you've got to you've got to know what you're working with. You've got to know the rules of the game that you're playing. And that cue ball is just not been his friend tonight. There'll be so many people going that don't, you know, play ball to some level and don't fully fully get it. When you're a professional snooker player, you you know where that cue ball's going to such a precise amount and. Because the cue ball is smaller than the object ball, it just reacts differently. It doesn't doesn't go where you're expecting it to. You saw him earlier on when he tried to play a cannon, he went wider. The cue ball throws off wider than you're expecting it to. And it, it's it's just uh, the lighter as well. It's not just the size. It's the you know the fact that it plays a little bit lighter. It changes everything, and it could be so hard because your your brain is trained to know where the the natural line of balls are, and they, they're not natural to a snooker player. Oh my oh. word, Carl Morris! What have you done? You may have just cost your partnership a chance for the night. That well, uh, that is incredible. <laughs> I can't quite believe what I've just seen. I can't believe what I've just seen. <laughs> Carl Morris and Chris Day. <laughs> Are absolutely <laughs> crying with laughter. <laughs> it is the wrong one break. Carmer is a touch confused there. Oh, that can't be dry. Wow. They, was, they were racing each other to the right centre pocket. Racing each other. That's what Rob was saying there. It might as well have been a foul break. Okay. That's how it feels. <laughs> Yellows is the choice then. Got to be careful not to hit the reds at the bottom of the table here. Played that at a nice pace. Didn't throw it too wide. That's landed absolutely plumb. Could have asked him which ball would he like to be on. It would be the bottom one of the two together on the left-hand side without being able to move anything or having to move anything. It's exactly where he ended up. Should get out from here. Minute and 15. He can run all this clock here, Carl. That should be a consideration. Absolutely should be. The good news is they do have the break if it gets it slightly wrong, but make it the buzzer beater. Yeah, the last break coming up dry for Rob really is a bit of a signal for him. Has he got enough angle here? Wants to get to roughly straight. Doesn't want to leave too much angle. Cue ball could run loose. Yeah, there's a bit more here than he wanted. I mean, it's only half a shot he's got to play. He's just got to nip it in. But, yeah, shake of the head because it's not what he wanted. Oh, my word. The two mistakes he's made tonight. <laughs> I've got no chance, he says, with 18 seconds left. He'll give it a good go, mind will Rob. That was an incredible miss from Carl Morris. And he, you can see from Rob here, he wouldn't have been a million miles away if he had a bit more time to go. <laughs> Even thumps in the double for good measure. An extraordinary end to an extraordinary match.
It finishes 2-2. Rob Warren and Chris Wakelin are out. Chris Day and Carl Morris are just about still alive, despite two of the biggest errors you'll ever see from Carl Morris. And the big winners are Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey, and they play next. All right, then. There are our two men in waiting. Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey need just a result here to secure qualification through to the last 16. Take on Terry Hunt and Jason Halley. Terry with the break. Jason with the first chance. And that result really pretty perfect for Ben and Sean. Eliminates one pairing and leaves their destiny in their own hands. Win and they're through. Is this a three ball plant? Oh, you better believe it. How nicely did that come out? Yeah, it's kind of like a dream. I was just thinking that for, for Carl and Chris, who should have won that previous match, the chances missed by Carl Morris was going to really hurt them. They need this partnership to, to come up big for them. And they haven't won a frame yet tonight. That's, the, that's what they're clinging to, is hoping they can rediscover some form and get going here, because they haven't really got going tonight. Sorry, just saying, whichever you feel comfortable for. I think he thinks the one on the right-hand side's the ball. As long as you're not hitting the red, I'd suggest it probably was. He is getting back across to it. Will you get nicer on it than you've already been on it? Possibly not. Well, they won't get a better chance to get their first frame on the board. Just a touch short, and this time Terry may want to use the red if he can. If he can't, he might have to come twice across the table. Twice across is the plan, and he doesn't get it. Mm. For me, this whole visit comes down to not playing the shot. But Terry's just played, what, three shots ago? Once that one was out of the way, they would have got out from there, whichever, wherever it landed. Uh, I'm with Terry. You've got, you know, you've got to back your partner to play what they're comfortable with. They're not comfortable playing the shot, but that was the shot for Jason that was going to win the frame for them. Sean in fabulous position before this match started. They're in even better shape now. Yeah, just trying to work out if the red at the top of the table passes the other red to top right. Everything else is, is plain sailing. In fact, they're playing it. Must do. Might even move the eight ball here. And I like the fact they didn't. No real need to. shot really wanted to make sure that the red right center wasn't going to be last ball so tracked all the way down the table and they've left a really good last ball you can see the angle he's looking for it just tracks a natural line behind the eight ball stay high of straight he's got a little bit short on that one needed to come off the cushion a few more rolls to make it natural. Now the line isn't perfect. It's not bad. It's the difference between being 
by the right, the left centre pocket and unmissable and being here and it being missable though was that simple shot from Ben being a little bit short. Uh, pop was played like it was unmissable. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Sean Sharkey likes it. He gets a tap of the table on the other side of the arena as well. Still needs making this clearance, but it's in a position to be made. That was lovely. Just needs to dot the I and cross the T. Finish this one with a flourish. That yellow is the only thing that could get in the way. He's got an edge. It's a tough shot. I don't think he has. has he got an, can he see just the edge I of think, it? I think he can probably see the eight ball, but there's no way. Yeah, he's, he has to swerve it to pot it. Yeah, that, that shot was so tough. And... Life, hope, maybe. <coughs> For Messrs. Day and Morris. That would be so annoying for Ben having done all the hard work there. Yeah, you see the frustration. It's one of those, uh, being ultra critical, I think he should have played the, the red off red a lot earlier, second or third shot if he could have got there. Yeah, it did land okay. You know, it he chose just to leave a good angle on the last ball rather than getting close to it, which I think was probably the right way to go, but it didn't seem to decelerate on the next shot. It didn't seem to strike it as cleanly. Probably worried about overhitting it rather than underhitting it and just got it wrong. <coughs> angle here as well. Oh, this needs making. Making it isn't, and look where he sent the eight ball. You lucky boy. Yeah, do you try and back double this? Or do you just try and come off it and leave the cue ball right on the top cushion and get the eight ball lined up with the yellow? These are the sort of situations where I think you play the player a little bit more than, than you play the, the situation. A lot of players say they don't do that. I don't believe it. Well, Ben Doyle ignored the player and played the pot. And that is a super back double from Ben Doyle. I think these two have played really well. I think the mistakes have been very, very limited. I think they played some really gritty match play when they've needed to. I think Sean in particular, as he tries to chase the eight ball here, I think Sean in particular has had to make some really <coughs> tough decisions out there in some tactical frames. You know, you think about the, the essentially what was the final frame of the the fourth match. It ended up 2-2. Two, two, and the frame he's just played was a, a very, very well executed frame of Paul. He progressed his chances with every visit to the table and uh, that was a fabulous frame he played. And I think they well 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 worthy of winning tonight's group, the way they've played. All the other pairs have just made a few too many mistakes. <laughs> they, they, having said they've made very few mistakes tonight, they make a, a very poor mistake here. They played out of turn. It was Sean Sharkey that broke, and then he played the next shot as well. We've not seen that very often. <laughs> With cue ball in hand. Jason and Terry. One minute and ten seconds. Yeah, he's okay. He's on win this. Your, win your first and final frame of the night. That's a lovely shot. It was good vision there from Terry as well to see that. Oh, yeah, you've got it. 
Oh. Oh, that was it for Chase. They <laughs> share a giggle. It's good to see they're still smiling out there. They've enjoyed their night, that's for sure, of Jason and Terry. Yeah, it's been good in particular to see Terry back out here playing away for the game for a long time. And hopefully we'll see him in some seniors events going forward. And if not, some more ultimate ball events. And they may still get this frame. <coughs> Come on, boys. 14 seconds. Can you give us a buzzer beater? That's a lovely shot. <laughs> and there's the reaction and they get it. <laughs> With a second left to play on the night. That's what the Pairs Cup is all about. There are your winners there, Ben Doyle and Sean Sharkey. They're through to the last 16 and they're absolutely thrilled with that. But probably even more thrilled on the other side of the arena.